The Rise of the Ottoman Empire The Ottomans, a nomadic group of Turkish people originally from Central Asia, emerged as rulers of the Islamic world in the 13th century. In 1453, they succeeded in capturing Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. The Ottoman Empire was located between Europe and Asia and interacted with both Eastern and Western culture throughout history. The Ottomans moved their capital to Constantinople and renamed the city Istanbul. The Ottomans also conquered Egypt and North Africa, reuniting all of the Muslim world under their rule, except for Persia and Afghanistan. They next conquered parts of Eastern Europe. By the mid-1500s, under Suleiman the Magnificent, the Ottoman Empire reached its height. The Ottoman fleet controlled much of the trade in the Mediterranean Sea until their defeat in 1571 by Spaniards and Venetians. At the heart of the Ottoman system was the Sultan, or ruler, and his lavish court. From Istanbul, the Sultan governed the entire empire as an all-powerful ruler. Under the Sultan's rule, the early Ottoman Empire was well organized and efficiently governed. He was assisted by a special army, the Janissaries, made up of soldiers recruited in childhood. The Ottomans recognized the cultural diversity of their empire. Jewish and Christian communities were represented by their own leaders. These communities were governed by their own laws and collected their own taxes. These methods of government, as well as Ottoman control over the crossroads of trade, promoted prosperity and stability. The Safavid Empire in Persia Islam also spread to Persia. The Safavids created a great Islamic empire in Persia in the early 1500s. Members of a Turkish tribe, the Safavids, were Shiite Muslims. They were opposed to the Ottomans, who followed the Sunni branch of Islam. Their association with Shiite Islam gave the Safavids an identity separate from their Turkish and Arab neighbors, still affecting Iran today. Safavid rule eventually extended as far south as the Persian Gulf and east to the Indus River. Safavid rulers, known as Shahs, used their large standing armies to maintain control. The Safavid court became famous for its beautiful palace carpets and paintings in miniature. The Muslim Invasion of India The impact of Islam was felt even farther east than Turkey and Persia. As early as the 8th century, Muslim invaders reached the Indus Valley by entering across the mountains through the Khyber Pass to the northwest of the Indian subcontinent. The Muslim Invasions In the 11th and 12th centuries, Turkish Muslims invaded India's northern plains destroying Hindu temples and cities. Historians believe large numbers of Hindus were tragically killed in these invasions. Muslims established independent kingdoms in northern India, known as sultanates. The most important sultanate was established around 1200 at Delhi. For the next 320 years, the sultans of Delhi ruled much of northern and central India. Unlike prior conquerors, the Muslims never fully adopted Indian ways. For example, Muslim women wore veils and remained secluded, even though Hindu women did not. At the end of the 14th century, the Mongol ruler Tamerlane destroyed the city of Delhi and slaughtered its inhabitants. The Delhi Sultanate never fully recovered from this blow.
merchants and artisans formed a small middle class. Below the middle class were the peasants, who were usually poor, particularly because they had to pay tribute to the government to help support the Ottoman armies. Below the peasants were slaves. They came from many areas as the Ottoman armies penetrated into Central and Eastern Europe, capturing prisoners of war in the Ukraine and elsewhere. Other European slaves were those captured by the Barbary pirates in the Mediterranean and then sold to the Sultan or other high-ranking officials. Some people were impressed or forced into service in the Navy as galley slaves. Estimates of the number of people impressed go as high as a million or more between the 16th and 19th centuries. One reason for the success of the empire was its relative tolerance toward Jews and Christians. The empire accepted Jews who had been driven out of Spain in 1492. Mehmed II issued an invitation to them to settle in Istanbul. Some members of the Jewish community, which expanded rapidly after 1492, became court physicians and diplomats. Others contributed to the literary community and, according to some accounts, were responsible for bringing the printing press to the Ottoman Empire. Often, however, Jews were only permitted to live in specified areas of the cities. Under Suleiman, Christians and Jews were allowed to worship and live with few restrictions as long as they paid a tax required of all non-Muslims in the empire. The elite of the empire, however, were always Muslim. The Mughal Empire 1526 to 1837. In 1526, Babur, a descendant of both Tamerlane and Genghis Khan, defeated the Sultan of Delhi and founded the Mughal Empire. Although the name was taken from Mongol, the Mughals were Muslims with close ties to Safavid Persia. Because the later Ottoman and Mughal empires used guns to control their populations and fight their enemies, Historians often refer to these as the gunpowder empires. The most famous Mughal ruler was Babur's grandson, Akbar the Great, 1542-1605. Akbar conquered neighboring Muslim and Hindu states, uniting northern India under his rule. Akbar next set out to unite all his Muslim and Hindu subjects by promoting religious toleration. He extended the special taxes paid by the Hindus and made use of Hindu officials in government. To govern his large empire more efficiently, Akbar divided it into 12 provinces. Well-trained imperial officials were sent to supervise local government, enforce laws, and ensure the collection of taxes. Akbar also encouraged learning, painting, music, and literature. Akbar's grandson, Shah Jahan, 1628 to 1658, showed less sympathy for Hindus. He reimposed special taxes on them and ordered the destruction of many Hindu temples. In the northwest and northeast, many people converted to Islam. Some of these people changed their religion to avoid paying the special taxes. Others converted because they were from lower castes and hoped to escape the caste system. Under Jahan's rule, Mughal artistic and architectural achievements reached a high point. Jahan built beautiful palaces, fortresses, and mosques to glorify his reign. The most famous and beautiful of his buildings, the Taj Mahal, was a tomb built for his wife. It stands as one of the finest examples of Mughal architecture, merging elements of Persian, Islamic, and Indian styles. Although the Mughals continued to rule in the north until 1857, a series of small, independent kingdoms developed in central and southern India. Soon afterwards, the Mughal Empire began to fall apart.
Sikhism. Sikhism was founded in northern India in 1469 by Guru Nanak. Guru means spiritual guide or teacher. Sikhs believe in one God and that all human beings are equal in the eyes of God. Therefore, Sikhs reject the caste system. Sikhs further believe that each of us can reach salvation, or union with God, by practicing devotion to God, truthful living, service to humanity, and standing up for justice for all people. To emphasize the ideal of equality, after every Sikh service, a communal meal is shared by all participants on the floor. Sikh men cover their uncut hair with a dastar, or Sikh turban, while Sikh women also keep their hair uncut.